Nigeria Data Protection Commission unveils five-year roadmap, targets 125 billion revenues. Federal government renews commitment to eradicating corruption. Plus, oil rises on Middle East worries, future cuts to borrowing cost. The program is Business Express, reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I am Benny Adams, your guide. The Federal Executive Council has approved the exemption of its tertiary education institutions from the Integrated uh, Payroll and Personnel Information System, that is the IPPI. State House correspondent Musbao Danwahab reports that it was a part of decisions taken at a council meeting on Wednesday. Moving on, the federal government of finance has, uh, through the Ministry of Finance, is reaffirming commitment to the, the president fight. has directed that vice chancellor should no longer, uh, or have been taken out of that service to allow for efficient uh, management of the universities and tertiary education, generally speaking. Before now. When the tertiary education institutions want to make recruitment, they have to run to the office of the head of service. The council, through the director of the president, has exempted them from that. We sincerely hope uh, these measures will be responsibly reciprocated by the institutions so that whatever has led to their being brought under those facilities will no longer uh, Arise. Council has decided to look at those waivers and review them so that Nigeria will not continue to lose money uh, at a point that uh, we all need these resources for uh, the development of the, of the country. We have um, said that they should maintain um, their chillers, the air handling units, the passenger boarding bridge, the escalators at the concourse, the remote boarding lifts that were specifically made for the physically challenged, and all those facilities they put there. Well, we apologize, apologize for, for that, that little hitch. Now, the federal government, uh, through the Ministry of Finance, uh, has reaffirmed commitment to lead the fight against uh, corruption in collaboration with the anti-graft agencies across the country at a one-day sensitization workshop organized by the ministry to commemorate the 2023 international anti-corruption day the permanent secretary okokone kenem udo emphasized the need to prevent and eliminate corrupt practices within the ministry and the broader federal civil service he highlighted that transparency is the foundation of a just and accountable society and called for collective responsibility to expose and eradicate corruption while stressing the importance of leveraging technology to create uh, tools that empower citizens in scrutinizing institutions and holding accountability, noting that digital platforms can play a significant role in facilitating access to information and fostering real-time collaboration. The theme of this year's Anti-Corruption Day is Engage in Transparency. At this point, we move to the subject matter of the day. Now, you will agree with me that smallholder farmers comprise 88% of all Nigerian farmers, but due to their small uh, scale space or small land space, they do not produce as many crops as their competitors. Consequently, nearly 72% of Nigerian uh, smallholder farmers live on less than $1.90 per day. And meanwhile, the agriculture sector has remained a little bit underdeveloped due to the huge concentration on oil and gas industry. 
The near neglect of the agriculture industry has led to what we describe as low use of mechanical equipment, uh, poor agricultural systems, poor road networks, and to transport and uh, produce a little bit of lack of access to quality fertilizer and seeds. Issues on data with smallholders farmers in Nigeria is another aspect that needs attention to enable government uh, provide adequate funding to meet expected targets. And uh, discussing these issues, with me this morning is Dr. Emmanuel Abusan. He is the Executive Director, Pan-African Institute of Agribusiness Management, Rwanda. You're welcome to Business Express, Doctor. Thank you so much for having me. Well, Doctor, we have talked about uh, the positives as well as the challenges when it comes to harnessing the potential in the agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. It is a fact that the agri subsector has been a large employer of a labor. But then we talk about the needed data to ensure that uh, whatever we do in the agri sector is properly upskilled. Where is the place of data in financing? Where is the place of data in increasing yield of a product, agro products, and all of that? Okay, uh, that's play a very big role in in enhancing farmers' productivity and then also uh, re even relieving us from debt, from debt as, as a nation. When you look at uh, the various aspects of data that we need to gather as a nation. We talk about weather, weather, uh, financial performance of these individual farmers. We also look at uh, even uh, data that talks about land ownership and land usage. Because when we look at land usage and then that uh, land ownership, we need to also promote uh, land usage as much as we pr pr promote uh, land ownership in, in Nigeria. Because many people might not have access to land ownership, but can have access to land usage. And then also we look at data of crop yield. Um, when we look at, uh, the, at the national level, what percentage of crops come from the north, come from the south, from the east, and all of that. It, so it helps us in, in, in directing uh, resources to this, to this sector. Uh, and to, to this sector. I also look at um, credit, credit worthiness of these smallholder farmers. So when we have the data, when we have the collection of this data, one of the things that it helps us to do is to know how even loans are given to these farmers. Because when you look at the Anchor Bra program, uh, the failure is bent on maybe farmers not uh, able to pay back or the, or, the, or the policies or the systems by which these loans were given. But because we don't have accurate data of the smallholder farmers, especially when it comes to their credit worthiness, when it comes to their, uh, to, to crop yield, their access, even data that talks about the access to the market. Some of these farmers may not even have access to the market, even when they have the product. Then we talk about the, 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 the loss of crop um, that is post-harvest lost. And then this will formulate how investors, okay, okay, investments so are made. You, you, we, can I hold your thoughts at this point? You, mm. you talk about credit worthiness. Yes. We have the, the complaint we usually hear as a challenge is the issue of access to funds for these farmers to upscale what they do. But now you've brought to the fore now the issue of credit worthiness. You have to be credit worthy first mm -hmm. before you access uh, this particular, whether you call it grants or loans that come at single interest uh, digit rate. Uh, but, but then, where is the balance in all of this? Where is the real challenge? Is it the credit worthiness or is it the availability of these funds to help these farmers upscale? All right. At, at the level, I would say the funds are available. Um, I wanted to mention something earlier. Uh, just the concluded um, um, workshop, validation validation workshop by the Ministry of uh, by the Ministry of Federal sorry by Federal Ministry of Investment Trade, yes, uh, invest, sorry, Industry Trade and Investment. And investment. That is the uh, uh, the commodity the commodity department. The Director of Commodity Export uh, Department Directorate sorry said that. There were investors that wanted to invest in, 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 ag in agriculture in Nigeria, especially cotton. However, because of the lack of data, they stepped back. So sometimes we have the funds, but again, the challenge is credit worthiness. Most of these farmers don't have credit worthiness. And they don't understand that it is your credit worthiness that gives you access to funding, either, either loan or grant.
So when we talk about credit worthiness, the loans that some of these individual farmers have taken before, how have they been able, what is, what is their repayment uh, nature like, behavior like? How have they been able to repay those loans? Are they, do they take loans and, 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 and disappear? Did they pay their loan? Did they pay it even at when due? So when you even look at the, uh, the shark tanks, one of the things you're going to discover is that the behavior of loan repayment in Nigeria is quite quite difficult compared to other countries, especially the country where I have uh, my business fingerprint, which is Rwanda, because they understand the consequences, uh, the action, they don't understand that every action has consequences. When they take loan, there's a law that, there's a law that apprehend them, they, they face the consequences. So they are eager to want to pay back their loans. But compared to Nigeria, where it's like, uh, if I know somebody, if I intimidate someone, you know, uh, our nature, uh, our behavior as Nigerians, it's something quite, quite, uh, uh, how will I put it? It's quite, um, it's questionable. It's, it's something that scares even investors. You take a loan from someone, for example, maybe even a friend, a friend take a loan from you and it's trying to scare you like, do you know who I am? And those nature are quite, are quite not too good for business. So the creditworthiness of most of these farmers is not credible enough for them to assess loans. And they don't even have financial data that talks about their their income, their expenditure, they don't have financial records. Most of these farmers don't have financial records. And these financial institutions, these are the requirements they seek for them to be able to know what loan they can give to you. Because we are trying to give someone, let's say someone is trying to apply for a loan of 300,000 when its capacity is at 150 because of the statement of, uh, statement of financial re records. So these are some of the few things that we need to start putting into consideration so that our farmers can have these data handy for them to be able to assess uh, assess loan. Some farmers might even be doing well financially, but because there are no records to justify their to justify what they are trying to uh, to take loans for, it's again another discredit on uh, to, to them. So these data are needed, and farmers at every at every level need need uh, need this this record. However, we might have challenges when you talk about uh, literacy level, um, uh, digital skills, uh, the, the the digital skills level, and all of that, but. We need data for these farmers to be able to assess funds. Sometimes funds are available, and it's just that we cannot assess them because we don't have the financial record data that okay, can Dr. help us Abusen, assess this uh, funding. Dr. Abusen, you, you've raised a, a number of challenges. Let's take them one after the other. Mm. Talking about uh, literacy level to possibly get to know the level of data, the data required, as well as the credit worthiness we're talking about. Where is a place of commodity associations? Where is a place of um, associations? You have maize farmers, you have rice farmers. What is actually your responsibilities? What are they doing to educate the farmers? Most times we hear, okay, it is government, government, government. What are we doing on our own as commodity associations? All right. So when, when you look at uh, the agro-ecosystem in Nigeria, for example, you see a big challenge in some of these uh, associations, like these farmers' associations, in terms of faction, uh, faction, this faction, that, this faction, that. The same commodity. Let me say, uh, for example, all farmers' association, for farmers' association of Nigeria, as at today, still struggle to know who is the authentic uh, president. There are two factions, this one, Everyone is contradicting each other. Now, when even when we even but have even when you have such contradictions, does this stop them from carrying out their primary responsibilities? Can you enlighten us? What are their responsibilities aside standing in the gap or in the middle to access funds when there are aids coming from take for instance the central bank of Nigeria of, mm -hmm. of recent uh, the present administration has declared state of emergency on agriculture saying uh, the CBN will continue to provide uh, funds to ensure that food is made available on the table of Nigerians now that uh, such a matching order has been given funds will be disbursed who and who is supposed to gain access to these funds? Yes, the contact point most times are these commodity associations. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, we have also a register with the CBN where we have the real farmers away from the political farmers or like say, the paper farmers, you would say. But what is actually the role, the responsibilities of uh, those associations? No, uh, I, I, I wish uh, the, the director of a commodity exchange uh, directorate of the Federal Ministry of Industry, Investment and Trade and Investment, who permits me to quote him, just like it said uh, from the concluded workshop they had, that as NACOTA, that is the, the association, association for cutting, do not have data that made investors to step back. 
the primary, the primary assignment of these associations is to even have data of their members. However, one of the things we have, we have discovered over time is that the numbers they have on paper are not as correct, as accurate as the numbers of the farmers that they have control over. So accurate data is still a big bit of a challenge. And the only, the only time most of these associations get to connect with smallholder farmers is when there is sort of intervention in court. Like, okay, CBN want to give Uncle Brad program, so they ask us to go and bring data of our members. You don't see them want to go to get mem data of their members. So that, and again, it's like, it's a game of numbers. So the more numbers we have, uh, the more access to these fundings we have. So they want to get now numbers of data, which originally, these are the, the, these are the data they should have even before any intervention comes. So, uh, but because it's more, um, I, I want to be, I want to have a level of respect for our, our associations because it cannot be 100% bad and at the same time it cannot be 100% good. However, for pro platforms like this is for us to, uh, to dialogue on how we can make what we are doing better. So one of the things these associations are meant to do is to protect the interests of the small other farmers, not just the interest of the executives in court of the associations. And for them to be able to do this, they should be able to have data primary data of their own, of their members. And in terms of farm profiling, uh, farmers profiling, uh, if to know what, what actor belongs to a particular farmer, how many actors is, is the, uh, is, uh, does the farmer own? And you can, have, you can own like two, three attacks, actors, but you are using only one or two. So these are data that these guys, uh, these, uh, these associations are, are, are meant to have. Then it will, now, it, will now, it will now navigate in how they have access to funding. Again, when you look at how they operate, most of them will tell you that they are cut across the, the 36 states of the, the federation. of the federation and all of that. However, okay, in, in finding solutions, in yeah. finding solutions to all of this and uh, drawing examples uh, from possibly uh, where you operate in Rwanda, yes, you are in Nigeria doing business in Rwanda, what are the lessons to learn, what are the comparisons, is there anything to learn from there, what, what should be done? All right, so um, harmonization of data. When you look at Rwanda, their data are quite harmonized, and I think Nigeria, the federal government of Nigeria, the federal government of Nigeria is trying to do their best to harmonize our data. However, we have we keep having technical issues because of, of of infrastructure. Let's say, for example, there was a point there was a point where when you want to when you want to um, register your business with CAC, you are required to fill in your NIN. At the moment, that link is not working. So you can even use your international passport instead of your NIN. Now, when we, can, when we harmonize our data, first of all, even to, from the data we have gathered, quality data, when we harmonize them, it enables us to know where we are and where we are going. Let's say, for example, in Rwanda, they'll tell you that they are producing over 900 liters of milk, of, uh, that is milk from cow, from cow every year. And in Nigeria, the data available is that we are, we are producing 200 liters, 200 liters. And I don't want to believe that that is true, but that is, the, what, that is the information we have access to. Now, if I'm an investor, for example, and I want to invest in such business, where will I want to invest? I want to invest in Rwanda, because we're talking about 900, uh, 900 liters, and Nigeria is at 200, 200. So when you, when you, when we, 200 tons, why it does is 900 tons. So when you look at the uh, uh, harmonization of data they have, and the quality of data they have, how they have been able to build infrastructures to enable them gather in, gather information. So even at the point of registration of NIN, you know, when we ask what is your job what is your job description, sometimes people are even afraid to put the fact that I'm a farmer. Like especially when I tell my friends that I'm a farmer, they want to laugh at you like you're a farmer because the orientation we have in Nigeria, uh, in Africa, make put farmers in an, in a disadvantaged position as though that if you're a farmer, you're poor. That's not uh, Dr. Totally Abutu, thank you very much. Uh, with, with, with that point, I want to believe things are changing so fast. We're having big time farmers and with the infuse of technology in the farming subsector and the issue of data, accurate, mm -hmm. not just accurate, not just a, a quality data, but also mm -hmm. accurate and legitimate data mm -hmm. being uh, provided. Investment will be attracted into this sector. This is a conversation we are going to continue time and again. Thank you so very much, Dr. Emmanuel Abutu, for sharing your thoughts with us at this particular point in time. Thank you so much. Now, moving on, gold rises as a Fed rate cut prospect dent dollar. Bond yields, and let's see how other commodities are trading around the world.
oil prices rose in early Asian trade on Thursday, extending gains from the previous session following a bigger than expected weekly withdrawal from the U.S. crude storage and signaling from the U.S. Federal Reserve that it would start lowering brewing costs in 2024. Lower interest rates cut consumer brewing costs, which can boost economic growth and demand for oil. Now, the news also sent the dollar falling, which makes oil less expensive for foreign purchasers. Brent features rose uh, 46 cents to settle at $74.72 a barrel. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude rose 48 cents to settle at $69.95. Uh, moving on, the World Bank says the removal of fuel subsidy and the exchange rate unification are critical steps by the present administration that will yield the desired growth and development of the nation's economy. Bosiri Abel reports that this was disclosed at the presentation of Nigeria Development Update by World Bank Group in Abuja. want is resilient, sustained, uh, and rapid, in fact, um, and inclusive economic growth. To achieve that, you first of all have to stabilize the economy. So in a nutshell, you do have to get growth above the population, rate of population growth, so that you have that positivity. And that is why we took time to look at the existing framework and significantly come up with something differently. And that's where we're heading into 2024, okay? Whereby we will be using inflation targeting, okay. and we will ensure that the use of monetary policy actually cascades down and has an impact. You can say you have raw materials uh, for exports or talent exports. So we categorize them in this way. So we have consistent raw material export. We realize that the value addition to those raw materials provide us more FX uh, revenue. So now the administration is now focusing on processes or um, policies that will help to facilitate the creation of industries that will add value to our raw materials. And, you can and the government has also taken steps on the road to recovery in terms of tightening monetary policy, in terms of, you know, thinking about ways of consolidating the fiscal. Uh, so, but that is an ongoing process. So that's the third part is that Nigeria still isn't out of the woods. Challenges remain. But we do see Nigeria kind of the policy mix, the stance of government, the intent of government is very clear. So that's what and then inflation a little bit more complicated because, as we'll discuss, the reforms do generate near-term one-off price pressures. But because they put the fiscal back on track, and as long as they're accompanied with appropriate additional uh, policies, um, they contribute to uh, decreasing inflation beginning next year. The Nigerian Export Promotion Council says having recorded $2.539 billion on oil exports in the first half of 2023, the new management is set to build on such successes with a plan to triple export volumes in the next 18 months. In the next one year to 18 months, we see a lot of our exporters triple their export. Uh, we have what we call the domestic export warehouse. We've started inspecting them. We want to use that as a one-stop shop where all the agencies, all the relevant agencies will be at a place where they do all the documentations. The products will be sealed, it will be containerized, and they'll go through the bags straight to the ship. That will reduce the bottlenecks that a lot of exporters are experiencing now. We want to do a whole lot in terms of certification. We all know that we have a lot of projects from different countries, so we want to do a whole lot in terms of certification. We are working with various agencies to ensure that these products are certified, and we are visiting some laboratories, and the reasons, the reason some of these products are rejected is because they don't pass them through the laboratories to be able to identify some of those uh, sanitary and phytosanitary uh, 
chemicals. We are also uh, looking at uh, capacity building, but the main thing we want to do, we want to identify some critical um, products and see how we can improve the development of such products from the farm gate to uh, market access. Now, mining in Nigeria has contributed to the country's economic development, although the sector faces challenges such as illegalities, uh, which has created unstable operating environment for investors. To this end, the Federal Ministry of Solid Minerals Development has warned mining communities, especially the youth, to desist uh, from illegal mining activities or face the full wrath of the law. Uduak Etim reports that this was at a stakeholders forum in Bayasi local government area of Cross River State. Ekriko is one of the communities in Biasel local government area of Cross River State endowed with solid minerals such as gemstone, tourmaline and others creating a deposit for mining in the area. Having received a report on illegal mining activities in the community, which resulted in confrontation between the youths and companies operating within the area, the Federal Ministry of Solid Minerals Development, Cross River State Office, in partnership with the Cross River State Government, swung into action with this peace talk and sensitization forum involving Special Mine Surveillance Task Force on illegal mining and community members. So correcting um, illegal activity is not all about you know, arresting. When you have this kind of sensation, you educate them, they get to understand it better, you know, and then you get better results. This present government has no tolerance for illegal mining and to encourage the youth to report any illegal mining in this community. I need the company to be the guru for us. Already we have embraced them to work with them, but it's meant for them to work with us too. As soon as we succeed getting the minerals, of course, we will take up our corporate social responsibility. The forum afforded members of the community to air their minds as they were also enlightened on cadastral units in the mining environment to ensure successful operations. From Biasa local government area of Cross River State, Uduak Etam, NTA News. And this is where we end this edition of Business Express. We value your feedback, so keep the comments, observations, and suggestions coming. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube on NTA's channel. Business Express returns uh, tomorrow, Friday at 3 p.m. I am Benny Adams saying, keep thinking and doing business. <laughs>